Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett and welcome to a new episode of UFOs and the Paranormal. Today's episode I call Those Damn UFOs. And when I say damn, I don't mean damn, I mean dams, as in hydroelectric power stations and reservoirs. There are a, quite a few cases of UFOs showing an interest in dams. These cases reach back decades they are occurring all over the world, and there are dozens of them. And I think this is something important to say about the ET agenda on our planet. UFO researchers have learned long ago that UFOs are attracted to anything technological. So we see a lot of sightings over military bases, over nuclear power stations. I did a prior episode on UFOs over prisons. So I think that's probably what's going on here. But what I'd like to do is take you on a journey through time, starting with the earliest cases, going all the way to the most recent, and exploring these damn UFO cases. And I think you'll find it quite interesting. I do have a lot of cases, so I'm going to just touch on the highlights with most of these. And we can see what's going on here. So let's just get started. Perhaps the earliest recorded dam encounter, certainly the one that I could find, occurred actually only days after the famous Roswell UFO crash on July 10, 1947, and this was in Parma, Idaho. Mr. and Mrs. Go and their friend, Peter Edgar, were outside their farms in Parma, Idaho when they saw three glowing objects maneuvering in the night sky over Owihi Dam. These objects flew in a V formation in tight circles, appearing and reappearing in the same location. And they did this for about 10 minutes before they finally just took off. It's a brief and somewhat unremarkable case, but soon more cases would occur, which would definitely establish the connection between UFOs and dams. And here's another early case, which occurred in Richmond, Virginia. This occurred on February 10, 1953, near the Richmond Quartermaster Depot in Richmond. And multiple Army officers observed two orange glowing disks hovering over a 75-foot water tower. And shortly later, the objects moved to the west and hovered over a dam in the area. They were observed at this time by a guard by the name of Jesse E. Kent. And while standing on the dam, he saw these objects hovering about 150 feet above the surface of the lake. They moved around these two disks for a few minutes, and the guard thought the objects were actually going to dive into the water, but instead, at this point, they took off vertically and disappeared. And according to him, these objects were fairly large, about 25 feet in diameter. They were featureless and totally silent. So basically, your classic UFOs. And again, they're hovering right over a dam. Now, here's a very famous series of events, actually, which occurred over the Loch Raven Dam and Reservoir. This is located in Baltimore, Maryland. And these events became quite famous because they there was a few of them. And the first encounter that I could find occurred in May 1953 when two young men were approaching the bridge which crosses the Loch Raven Reservoir and for no apparent reason that they could see, their car engine died, followed by the radio and headlights, and moments later a quote, orange glowing object appeared 300 feet ahead of them over the bridge was saucer-shaped and bright enough to actually reflect on the water. The two men became frightened and fled their vehicle, and as they watched, this object actually sent down a cone of light, a beam of light, into the water. They could hear it making a low humming noise, and after about 10 minutes, which is a pretty long time, this object disappeared. Now, as amazing as this incident was, it was a sighting which occurred five years later, on October 26, 1958, that would bring international headlines. Two men, Philip Small and Alvin Cohen, 
were again approaching this same exact bridge when they came upon a, quote, large, flat, and sort of egg-shaped object hovering 150 feet overhead. They eased the car slowly forward until suddenly the engine died and the electrical system failed. At this point, the object flared in brightness, and they felt a wave of heat and heard a loud noise. And as this light faded, they saw this object rise upward and disappear. At that point, the car engine came back to life, and the two men quickly left the area and reported their sighting to authorities. At this point, both men noticed that they had a burning sensation on their face and they went to the Baltimore hospital where they were examined by doctors who did confirm these burns. And according to researcher Marcus Loth, over the decades there would be a number of other sightings. For example, in 1978, a fisherman reported seeing a quote, bright round light actually rise up out of the water, hover briefly, and then dive back in the lake. And years later, in 1983, there was a repeat performance viewed by multiple Baltimore City Water Department workers. It's amazing how many sightings there are, because there's more. In April of 1986, musician Sharif Jamil and two friends said that they were on the dam and they saw a, quote, glowing oval-shaped object Hovering, hovering directly overhead. They took off running. And a final sighting occurred in January of 2000 when a witness says that they saw a glowing green disc over the dam. And following this encounter, the witness says that they suffered from severe eye problems and pain in the back and joints. So clearly something is going on here. As researcher Marcus Loth writes that something strange appears attracted to the Loch Raven Reservoir is surely beyond doubt. Just what is the reason for the interest in this region of whatever intelligence lays behind these mysterious crafts? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? But there are so many cases. Here's another case which we don't have the exact date for, but it's somewhere around the late 1950s, and this occurred in Davis Dam in Arizona. And I will just quote the witness here. Well, actually, it's the son of the witness. And as the son of the witness says, My father worked at a small dam called Davis Dam in Arizona on the Colorado River across from what is now Laughlin. It is between Hoover Dam and Parker Dam. He would tell of UFOs coming at night to get power from the dam. He and another man would be out on the top of the dam and would see the UFOs. The father told his son that these objects appeared often and they were classic saucer shaped and covered with lights. So here we have the first indication that UFOs are not only hovering dams but perhaps taking some of the electricity. And there are other cases like this, as we shall see. And here's another case. This one occurred in July of 1962 at the Foot Dam near Oscoda, Michigan. This one comes from two fishing buddies. They were fishing for wall-eyed pike on the pond created by Foot Dam. This is only a few miles, by the way, from Wurtsmouth Air Force Base. And they would often see jets landing and taking off from there. But on this evening, the jets had finished their maneuvers, and the two men were fishing in the center of this miles-wide reservoir, when without warning, the complete darkness was pierced by a bright light overhead. And as one of the witnesses says in his own words, and I quote, Looking up, we saw a huge ship hundreds of feet in diameter right above us. There was no sound. It was flashing all sorts of colors. It was immense and terrifying. Almost immediately, it seemed that numerous fighter jets came pouring out of the runway. Slowly, the ship rose until it appeared the size of a half dollar and zoomed to the west almost instantly. So, <laughs> it appears that the military did detect this object and scrambled jets after it. 
The men quickly returned to their camp, built a bonfire, and went to sleep. But the next morning, they listened to the radio news and learned that the local police stations had been flooded by callers reporting UFOs. So apparently there were multiple witnesses to this case. And here's another case which occurred just a few months later. And this was quite far away from that location in Fort Collins, Colorado. This occurred on October 24th, 1962, when Southern Railroad employee Lester Sandler called the local sheriff to report his sighting of a round, gray, white object, which he had seen dropping from the sky just west of Fort Collins. And uh, the sheriff's office sent deputies to investigate. And at this point, another report came into the office describing an object which had actually landed at the base of Dixon Canyon Dam. This is on Horse Tooth Reservoir, the north end of Horse Tooth Reservoir. And the witness said that this object was orange, huge in size. And the Air Force was contacted and sent up planes to investigate. However, by the time they arrived at the location, this object was gone. Now here's another really dramatic case actually which occurred two years later on June 20th, 1964 at the Gorge Dam in New Halem, Washington. The main witness was a young man who was visiting with his uncle who actually worked at the dam. They were at the powerhouse of the dam when without warning a large metallic disc dropped from the sky. Initially it was sideways on edge but it then assumed a horizontal position and hovered just above the water directly in front of the powerhouse. Alarms immediately went off and the witness viewed this object very close from, he says, about 30 feet away. He estimates that this saucer was about 100 feet in diameter and 30 feet thick, so quite large. And here's where it gets even stranger. I'll just quote the witness directly. As he says, I saw many dark-colored, small, human-looking occupants looking at me and moving aside so that others could take turns looking at me. They seemed to smile at me, and I feel like they liked me. They saw a whirling motion in the water below the disc, and it was humming lightly. Then the outside edge in two places, like rings, began to counter-rotate, increasing in speed, and the windows closed. So realizing that what he was seeing was very unusual, the witness began yelling for his uncle to come outside and view this object. And after just a few moments, his uncle came outside and joined him. And at that exact moment, this object moved up and over the tree line. And both witnesses could now see a clear transparent dome on top of the object and two brightly dressed human looking figures apparently piloting the craft. And the witness shouted out, look, it's a UFO, to his uncle. And his uncle, who was skeptical of UFOs, said that he thought it might be a secret Russian craft. But at that moment, U.S. jet fighters appeared and apparently tried to intercept this craft, which quickly darted away and was gone. And according to the witness, this did get the attention of the FBI, who was called in to investigate this whole incident. So a pretty interesting case involving humanoids. And here's another one involving humanoids. I have covered this case before in a previous episode, but it's absolutely relevant here, so I'm going to repeat this. This occurred at Lake Casitas, which is located just inland off the coast of Ventura, California, Southern California, and this is sort of at the northern edge of the Santa Catalina Channel, which is a huge UFO and USO hotspot. So this dam is, or this lake, Lake Casitas, is an artificial reservoir. It was built in 1959 uh, when a dam was put in. And one day in 1964, five years later, after this lake was created, this reservoir, an Air Force officer and pilot by the name of Frank S. Kinsey 
was at Lake Casitas with his brother-in-law when they heard a loud sound of splashing water. And this case was investigated by a MUFON field investigator by the name of Robert D. Neville. And Frank Kinsey told Robert Neville, as he says, I looked out into the lake, and here's this object coming out of the water. So this object emerged from the water with such speed that it actually sucked up a large column of water, which came loudly crashing down, and this is what drew the attention of Frank Kinsey. And again, as Frank says, I was flabbergasted. It was a round object, and it looked like it had a cone on top where a person was looking out at us, a being looking out at us. I could see the eyes staring at us. I happened to have a pair of binoculars with me at the time. I picked them up and looked and could see a person looking out at me. Frank estimates that this object was about 30 feet wide. The outside perimeter of the object appeared to be rotating and, according to Frank, it emitted a painfully loud noise. He could see several portholes situated around the top cone section of the, this object, and it was through one of these portholes that he could see this being. He said these windows looked like, quote, real thick, heavy glass of some kind, or maybe it might have been plastic. At any rate, this object suddenly accelerated, glowing first a lavender color, and then bright orange-yellow, and in a few seconds, it was miles away, disappearing over the mountains. However, Frank did have a camera with him and quickly snapped a photo of this object, as you can see here, as it moved away. And as Frank says, it had a gleam to it. It had a shine to it like nothing I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of metals here on Earth that had a high gloss but nothing like this that I've ever seen. So that's a very interesting case involving photographs and a humanoid. Now probably the most controversial, complicated, and widely viewed damn UFO is what happened throughout 1966, and really beyond, at the Raymond Dam and the Wanock Reservoir in New Jersey. This was on the evening of January 11, 1966, when this series of incidents began. On that day, hundreds of local residents, including police officers and government officials, observed an intensely bright glowing orb over the reservoir. This object darted around, hovered, glided across the reservoir for a period of hours. It was silent, it pulsed in brightness, it changed in color from white, red, and green back to white. So calls were flooding the local police station and crowds of people converged to watch this object. Some reported it as being quite small, only a few feet in diameter, while others thought it was larger, perhaps nine feet wide. Now this object was viewed throughout the evening and actually into the next day. Um, so, some said that when they saw it, it was hovering in place. Others said it was darting around at high speeds. I mean, there was a lot of witnesses. And it was later that year, on October 10, 1966, that the UFO returned and put on an even more dramatic display over this same reservoir. Again, it hovered very low over the water, performing fantastic maneuvers, and again, the local police station was flooded with calls, and hundreds of people converged to view this spectacle. And according to some of the witnesses, this object at times would swoop very low over the surface, causing the water to actually rise in the air. There were a number of photographs taken, though to this day they remain somewhat controversial. At any rate, Stewart Air Force Base was contacted, and they tried to debunk us, saying that the light was nothing more than a helicopter on maneuvers, though they later denied this. So there was quite a bit of debunking and explanations being raised to account for these sightings, including everything from weather balloons, seismic lights, earthquake lights, marsh gas, and even Venus. And in fact, there's some indication that there was a cover-up enacted 
because some witnesses say that they were actually approached by government officials who told them not to talk about what they had seen. But this case did generate international headlines. Uh, there were so many witnesses, and today the sightings remain a classic in UFO literature and have yet to be fully explained. So yeah, many of these cases are quite dramatic, and here's a very dramatic case which occurred at the Funil Dam and Power Station in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. This is a rather harrowing dam UFO encounter, which occurred on the evening of August 30th, 1970. The main witness was Almiro Martins de Fritas. He was a security guard at the Funil Dam, and on that evening, he was on the dam itself when he saw an object approaching very low. He said it had about 15 portholes which were shining blue and yellow light, and he approached to within about 50 feet of this object. And fearing that the UFO would damage the dam in some way, he actually drew his gun and fired twice at the object. Probably not a good idea, because in response, this object whined loudly, flared in brightness, then struck Almiro with a beam of light. Now this caused him temporary blindness. He shot anyway at the object again, and according to him, he actually heard all three bullets strike the metallic surface of this object. Uh, meanwhile, other guards came running. Uh, they heard the gunshots. And this object quickly moved away while Elmiro was rushed to the hospital. And his sight uh, remained, I mean, he was blind for about two weeks following this incident when his vision was suddenly restored. So thank God that was a temporary condition. But here's another interesting factor to this case. An investigation of the area where this object had hovered revealed that the cement on the dam directly below the object was sort of powdered and cracked and pitted with holes. So apparently it had quite a hot temperature which affected the dam itself. This is a good landing trace case as well. Physiological effects, landing traces, it's pretty well verified. And, as does occur in some of these cases, the object returned. It was a few days later on September 3rd when this object made another appearance over the dam, apparently the same object, and this time the guard on duty uh, did not shoot at it. He flashed lights at the object, which then quickly darted away. And three days later, on September 6th, the UFO came back again. And on this occasion, six guards watched this object circling over the dam area. So it's pretty clear this object is showing an intense interest in this dam. And so many cases all over the world. Here's another one which occurred at the Clearwater Dam outside of Piedmont. It was late one evening in June of 1971 when a woman was driving home from work across the Clearwater Dam road and saw an incredible sight. And I'll just quote her directly. As she says, I saw a huge glowing round object at the bottom of the dam. It was underwater and it emitted a greenish glow. I clearly saw what appeared to be a double row of small windows all the way around it. It was glowing so bright that I could see it clearly. I was terrified that it would come out of the water and chase me. I'll never forget it. So this was a USO, an unidentified submersible object, which, as we have seen, does occur in these damn UFO cases. And it was actually only two weeks earlier that this same witness was driving with her daughter and a friend when they saw a UFO, perhaps the same one, rise from a field nearby and chase their car down the road for a short period of time. And it was shortly after the second sighting of the USO when the witness had a third encounter, which again appeared to be the same object, complete with two rows of small glowing windows. So a pretty dramatic case. 
So damn UFO cases involving humanoids are somewhat rare, but as this next case shows, they do happen, and they provide really good evidence of the ET's interest in the dams themselves. This case occurred in 1971, just south of the Weragamba Dam. This was actually in the Jameson Valley in New South Wales, Australia, south of the Weragamba Dam backwaters. And in the middle of the night, the witness was awakened by a loud humming noise, he grabbed a flashlight and went to investigate, and to his amazement, he approached a clearing which was illuminated by the glow from an egg-shaped object landed on the ground. He saw several dark, human-looking figures moving around the object. He turned on his flashlight, at which point the figures quickly entered the object, which rose upward and darted away at high speed. So while this wasn't directly over the dam, it was dam adjacent. And I think it's probably connected to these types of cases, which is why I wanted to include it. But year after year, this is happening. It was just one year later, on May 25, 1972, when another case occurred at the Piedmont Country Club in Piedmont, Missouri. And this is really interesting, the main witness is Marjorie Cundiff. She's the manager of the Piedmont Country Club, and she had a very close-up sighting of a dam UFO. It was shortly after noon. She was driving across the dam and noticed something peculiar. Uh, the water levels had just recently riven, risen due to the recent rains, but to her puzzlement, the surface of the lake was showing a very strange movement. And then suddenly, she says, a quote, flat, square-topped object rose from the water. It made a sweeping turn and then quickly moved away, but it was just a few nights later that she was woken up by her dogs growling and barking, and venturing outside, she saw a strange light hovering over the dam area. She got into her car to investigate, and the light was gone. But as she approached the dam, her radio ceased to function, and when she left the dam, this object rose upward and darted away at high speed. So this may be very much connected to the case just uh, above, which also occurred in the same general area. So, moving along, one year later, on February 4, 1973, numerous witnesses observed a silent glowing object hovering over the waters of the Wheeler Dam in Huntsville, Alabama. So police were sent to investigate and they actually watched this object as it disappeared into the water and after about 10 minutes emerged from the lake and then moved off over the trees. There was apparently an inquiry at local airports but they, it revealed no known aircraft in the vicinity at the time of the sighting. It's amazing how many cases there are because it was just a few months later, many miles away, that another rare humanoid case occurred. This was at the Rio Dam in Port Jervis, New Jersey. This occurred on June 5, 1973. Two men were just finishing up a night of fishing and decided to throw their lines in one more time when, without warning, an oval-shaped brownish-purple craft appeared over the lake. They said it had five glowing green portholes and it was emitting two purplish beams of light into the water. And both men thought that this object appeared to be sucking up water from the lake. So there are a few cases like this. And this object came closer and after just a few moments it approached to within about a hundred feet at which point these men could see a figure a humanoid figure inside the object. They described this figure as having sort of brownish skin, a round mouth, round eyes, large pointed ears, and a wrinkled leathery face. So clearly not human. It was looking out the portholes at them and it appeared to be surprised to see the men there. That was their impression, but at that point the object accelerated at high speed and disappeared over the top of the dam. So there's quite a few cases in the 
upstate New York area. So this could be connected to that. But again, these are occurring all over the world. Three years later, another case occurred near the town of Silverthorne, Colorado. This is a small town with a population of less than a thousand people, and it stands at 8,000 feet elevation just below the Dillon Dam, which feeds into a small lake directly below. This occurred on July, in July of 1976. Now this city, Silverthorne, is located in a little valley surrounded by mountains. And one evening around that time, a witness and his friends were getting ready to start fishing on the lake and looking up, they saw a metallic saucer with small windows moving across the lake toward the dam. It was pretty close. They estimate it was about 2,000 feet away, maybe 1,500 feet high. It zipped quickly across the sky, well below mountain level. The witness called out to his friend who looked up, and at that moment, the object disappeared. So his friend only got a brief glimpse of it, but the main witness got a real good look at it, and as he says, it was traveling fast, but not too fast for me to observe the little portholes. The object was bright. I followed it for probably eight seconds, and it just disappeared in front of my eyes. So the next day, he called a UFO hotline and learned that several other people had also called to report their sighting. And this changed the way he felt about UFOs forever. As he says, I rarely tell anyone about this event, as people generally seem to think I am a nut or a druggie or some other silly justification of my so-called delusion. Everything that happened is engraved in my mind as if it happened yesterday. The memory of the UFO remains with me, as clear as when it happened. It's an event I shall never forget. From that day on, I not only believed in UFOs, I knew they existed. Nothing like seeing it with your own eyes. And again, all over the world. Here's another case which occurred one year later, June 17, 1977, at the Castelo de Bode Dam in Portugal. And this did receive national press attention and was in fact investigated by the Portuguese military and the government. The main witness was Jose Francisco Rodriguez, who was 23 years at the time when he was flying over the dam, which also, by the way, contained a hydroelectric installation. This pilot, Jose, saw a dark craft emerge from the clouds. He called the control tower who told him that they had no other aircraft in the area. And at this point, this object approached directly in front of the cockpit of Rodriguez's plane. And this caused his plane to vibrate violently and his compass to spin out of control. Thankfully, the pilot was able to re retain control of his plane just in time to prevent a crash. And here's where it gets interesting. At the same time that all this was going on, there was a power failure at the dam itself, which was described as a, quote, a huge unexplained drop of energy. And there were other witnesses. Two witnesses were walking along the dam at that time and observed the entire incident from the ground. So this is one of many cases involving good physical evidence in terms of a power failure or its affecting electromagnetic equipment in some way. And here's another case, I mean, year after year. This one's actually the same month, the same year. This was June 1977 at the Fort Phantom Lake in Abilene, Texas when two men became witness to a low-level dam UFO. The main witness was a student pilot and quite familiar with aircraft. He and his friends were sitting on lawn chairs overlooking the lake, watching the stars, and they were actually talking about UFOs when to their amazement an object appeared in the distance. It moved towards them over the lake and then over the dam, hovered, reversed course, and went back the way it had come. The witness says the object was silent, not much larger than a small car, pretty small, 
and was very low, hovering about 150 to 200 feet overhead. He said it glowed red and looked almost translucent. Five minutes later, this object reappeared, hovered, made a few right angle turns, and then moved directly to the power plant at the far end of the lake. It was moving slowly, no more than 20 miles per hour, and remained in view for a long time, about 20 minutes. Really impressed the witness, as he says, I know I am not crazy. There was someone else with me who saw the same thing. I don't, I don't know what I saw. I only know what it was not. It did not look like anything I have seen in the air before or since. So pretty darn interesting. Here's another case which also occurred in Texas three years later. This occurred at the Dam B Lake near the Angelina River in Texas, and it occurred on September 15, 1980. In this case, the witnesses are two brothers who were out hunting at night when they saw these two strange lights moving slowly over the high-tension power lines heading directly towards them. And as these lights got closer, one of the lights sent down a beam of light. And it was at this point that the brothers realized they were seeing UFOs. And I will just quote one of the witnesses directly here because he describes it pretty well what happened. So this is one of the witnesses talking, and I quote, We both became very frightened, and I cranked up the jeep and drove hastily out of the treeless area and parked about 50 feet in the woods. We both grabbed our guns. I have never been so scared. I was shaking. I turned off the engine and rolled the window down, and looking straight up, I saw one of the craft had moved straight above us. It was about 60 feet above the treetops. The bottom of the craft looked very different. I recall a triangular pattern of amber lights with some long neon tube lights also. The craft hovered above us for a few minutes. It made a continuous shh sound. I thought we were about to be dead, but the craft moved slowly away keeping the same altitude and fear left us, as we figured, if the craft wanted to harm us, it would have when it was above us. So our mood changed from complete fear to curiosity. We put down our guns and ran into the opening under the high power lines for a better view. We noticed one craft had stayed back in a stationary flight position, while the other craft made a circular horizontal flight pattern. The roving craft returned near the stationary one and both hovered for a few minutes. Then as we looked on, hoping they would take us for a ride, they both shot silently into the upper atmosphere like a shooting star in reverse. This event blew our minds. So as more and more of these cases occur over the years, it becomes increasingly clear that UFOs are in fact attracted to dams. I mean, it's undeniable. Here's another really dramatic case, which occurred at the Blewett Falls Dam near Norwood, North Carolina. The Blewett Falls Dam, this is fed by the P.D. River, and this dam holds a 2,500-acre reservoir and a large hydroelectric plant. This case occurred on August 14, 1984, and the main witness is a man and his cousin. They're anonymous. They observed a, quote, large black triangle-shaped object hovering directly over the dam's hydroelectric plant. They estimate that this object was 300 feet wide, and at first they thought it might be a helicopter or blimp, but when they stopped to get a closer look, it turned off its lights, and as this witness says, it was obvious to me that we had been spotted by a person or something inside of the object. I was of the opinion that the occupants of the object were deliberately trying to hide from us. When I exited my car, I saw the dark underbelly of the object. It was huge. I could tell due to it blocking out the stars above. I vaguely recall other people who per pulled over to observe it too. And the funny thing is that I do not recall talking to them about what we all saw. I do not have any recall of what happened the rest of that night.
So that's interesting. Makes me wonder if there was missing time. What's really cool about these cases is how widespread they are. Here's another case which occurred in 1986 over the Palmar Dam in Montevideo, Uruguay. This object was described as being luminous, yellow in color, and spherical shaped, and remained there for such a long time that the Uruguayan Air Force actually scrambled two jet fighters to intercept it. However, as the jets approached, this object sped away, changing from yellow to orange and then red, disappearing off into the distance. The jets returned to the nearby Durazno Air Force Base, at which point the objects reappeared in the same exact location. <laughs> so the two jets again took off and approached the object a second time, and again this object sped away, changing colors. The pilots did attempt to pursue it, but this craft moved quickly away from them. And here's where again it gets even stranger. Following this incident, there was a power failure in the city of Montevideo. And according to Colonel Ariel Sanchez, who investigated this case, he says, and I quote, Yes, we believed that the object must have affected the power line in some way, causing the overheating, because technicians detected an overheating in some transformers in the line that supplies the capital city. We suppose this might be a result of that incident. After all, there must be a reason why it was over the dam. It must have been doing something there. What it was, we don't know. Security guards and employees also witnessed the object's flight around the dam that night. The object was seen from the ground and from the air. This leaves no doubt about its materiality. It's amazing how many cases there are. Here's one which occurred not far away from Verones, Russia. This occurred at around 1.30 a.m. on April 30, 1990 at the Bebe Pond near Petrovskoy Paninsky. And the main witness is Sergei Ovsyanakov, and he was fishing at this pond. And as he began to walk home, he saw a glowing disc-shaped object which had landed next to the dam. He was very curious about it, so he approached the disc, and he saw, he says, a half dozen glowing humanoids floating around the area. And seeing that one of the figures was quite close to him, he fled the area and watched from a distance. And after a while, he says, these figures returned to the disc, which moved off over the forest and then took off into the distance. So many cases. It seems like there's not an area on the world that doesn't have these kinds of encounters. The next case I'd like to cover occurred in 1997 at the Muskrat Dam in First Nation, Ontario. This is in Canada. And this dam was visited by a green orb-shaped fireball, which was bright enough to actually illuminate the entire area. This is a huge lake. It covers about 4,800 acres and is in a very remote area with a local population of only a few hundred people. But according to one of the witnesses who saw this, he says, and I quote, It landed in the lake in front of my house, but in the middle of the lake. It was a really bright green, which is all I can remember. And he was so impressed by this sighting that 23 years later, he reported this to the National UFO Reporting Center. So again, all over the world. Here's a case which occurred in Santiago, Chile. This was at the Trank El Falfel Dam in the El Cajon del Maipo area. This occurred, you know, not far from Santiago, Chile, which does have a hydroelectric power station that actually provides electricity to the city of Santiago. So this occurred on January 24th, 1998, the main witness is Sergio Rojas. He and his four friends were driving up the mountain toward the dam when they saw two balls of light zip overhead, followed by a third. And arriving at the dam, they exited their car and peered down into the water, which was 300 feet below them. And to their amazement, 
a huge glowing cigar or egg-shaped object almost 60 feet long rose out of the water. It said it made a high-pitched noise and emitted a, quote, strange mist, hot and cold, at the same time. They fled back to their vehicle and drove down the mountain, and a short time later they saw it again. This object was hovering about 2,400 feet overhead. They got out of their car and watched as this object sort of faded away. So year after year, this is happening. Here's another which occurred over Chile's largest dam. This is at Lago de Calbon. And this does contain a huge hydroelectric plant. This occurred on May 16, 1998. And this object was described as a huge dark disk with an orange light on the bottom and smaller lights around the circumference. Witnesses said that the object was so big that it seemed to cover the whole valley. So people were actually able to photograph UFOs around uh, this area on a number of occasions. But at any rate, on this occasion, on May 16, 1998, this object hovered at about an estimated 3,300 feet for a good 20 minutes before finally moving off. A UFO researcher Louis Sanchez Perry investigated this incident and he learned that in the previous months the object had been seen at the dam several times causing apparent power failures. As he writes, and I quote, they call the UFOs Rabones, which means thieves, because they say they steal electricity. Before they had the high-tech plant, they didn't have many blackouts, one or two in a month. But now they have three in a week. US UFOs have been seen coming out of Lake Colbon near the high-tension wires, absorbing electricity, absorbing water, and some of them have gone at high speed through the valley towards the hydroelectric plant. So when not coming out of the water itself, the objects have been seen hovering at less than a thousand feet over the dam before darting off. Here's another case. i um, just got a few more I'd like to cover. This one occurred on July 7, 2000, near the Flood Control Dam. This is in Richfield, Utah. Three friends were driving a convertible Jeep near the dam when they saw what they first thought was a helicopter or a flare, but it was hovering about three to 400 feet over the dam, sending down a bright cone of light. So they were curious and drove closer to investigate, and as they approached, this object darted off at amazing speed, they said, disappearing in a streak of light. What was weird, however, was this cone of light remained. When they finally reached this location, they watched this cone of light slowly fade from view. They remained for a little while, looking for any more evidence of activity, but nothing occurred. However, later, after talking around town and investigating, they did find other people who saw UFOs on the same evening. So there's so many cases. Here's another which occurred, actually, at the Wyvenhoe Dam in Brisbane Valley, Queensland, Australia. This occurred on September 14th, 2003. It's a very brief case, but it's still interesting. The witnesses were Mr. and Miss Thompson, who observed a gray disc-shaped object hovering just 100 feet over the waters of the Wyvenhoe Dam. And again, it seemed to be affecting the water because beneath the disc, this water of the lake appeared to be agitated. After about 10 minutes, this object took off at an angle at, quote, incredible speed. All right, here's another case, Nashville, Tennessee, July 2nd, 2007. I'll just quote the witness directly here. As the witness says, it was a sphere lit up at about 500 feet away over an interstate by a dam in the local Hermitage area. I went out to smoke with my fiancé at 30 minutes after midnight. About 500 feet away over a local dam, we saw what we thought was a local water tower lit up, but we soon realized this was not near the tower. This thing, whatever it was, was huge and lit up. It was not moving, and it looked, for a bit, like it was on the top of some trees. 
We have no clue what this object was, but when we came back out after going back in, it was gone. So I don't know the exact dam, but they viewed this object from about 500 feet away. And here's another case which occurred in South America, more specifically at the Roguero Dam in Reserva Los Robles in Moreno, Buenos Aires, Argentina. This occurred in October 2008, and the main witness was Ranger Chaco Ferrer and his assistant, Lieutenant Hector R. Losa. Uh, they were at the Roguero Dam when they both repeatedly heard strange buzzing noises while on sentry duty at the dam. And on one such, such occasion, Lieutenant Hector Losa exited the shack and was confronted by police officers who said that they had seen a strange light hovering directly over the dam shack. And on another occasion, a group of fishermen on the lake said that they saw a six-foot-tall hair-covered figure with a large head and glowing eyes. So it's another case involving multiple sightings and apparently a humanoid. And here's another case also from Argentina, more specifically from the town of J. V. Gonzalez. This occurred on November 27, 2009, when numerous residents of the town watched a huge, glowing cigar-shaped object hovering directly overhead for nearly an hour. They said it was silent, it pulsated with light, and after hovering, it moved over the El Tunal Dam and hydroelectric power station. At this point, as we have seen in other cases, there was a sudden and unexplained power failure, which affected almost 400 square miles. Now, there was an investigation of this incident, and it revealed that a turbine had inexplicably burned to the point that it was almost melted. A group of men were fishing in the reservoir when this UFO appeared, and they said it cast a white-yellow light down on them, and they actually watched it hover over the turbines, emitting a loud humming noise and sending down beams of light directly onto the turbines. So this is very well uh, verified. In fact, UFO researcher Mercedes Casas investigated this incident, and as she says, I interviewed some field workers in a tobacco farm. And they mentioned that there was an object in October of last year, 2008, that was doing the same thing. It emitted beams towards the earth, and from the earth there were flames going upward. There are small dams used by farmers in this area. And more research revealed that five power poles had also been burned out without any explanation. But this case was investigated by several UFO researchers who found several witnesses who reported various effects, such as partial momentary paralysis and malfunctioning cell phones and digital cameras. Despite this, however, one person did manage to snap a photograph of this object. So as you can see, really good evidence. There's physiological evidence. There's landing trace evidence. There's photographic evidence. Uh, power failures. There's a lot going on here. Just a few more cases. On July 4th, 2010, a case occurred at the Old Hickory Dam near Nashville, Tennessee. And this area was targeted actually by multiple objects described as blood red orbs. Uh, yeah, this occurred on July 4th, 2010, <laughs> during actually a local fireworks show which if you remember my previous episode, fireworks do attract UFOs. And while watching the fireworks, witnesses saw a three, actually, orbs hovering about 7,000 feet directly over the dam, darting at several hundred miles per hour. So perhaps it was attracted to the dam or to the fireworks, hard to say for sure. But according to one of the witnesses, and I quote, Five police boats on Old Hickory Lake all shine their spotlights at them with no reflection of spotlights on the object. 
three more objects appeared moving in the same direction. These objects appeared the same as the other objects which preceded them. All six objects, after hovering over Old Hickory Dam, disappeared north and up towards Kentucky. So this entire incident lasted about 10, min 10 minutes, but it was only three months later, December 10, 2010, the UFOs were back over Old Hickory Dam. And on this occasion, there was only one object observed, which was described as disc-shaped, and the witness reports that this object hovered at low elevation over the dam, sending down beams of light. This disc descended downward, presumably into the lake itself, though the witness could not confirm this as he couldn't actually see the water. But after this uh, object disappeared, the witness did notice three other orange orbs pulsating and hovering towards the southeast. As he says, this was a very strange thing to me, so I want an answer. Yeah, me too. Uh, so many of these dams do have multiple encounters. And here's one which occurred at the Scamenden Dam in West Yorkshire, England. This is a big dam. It's 170 feet. It holds almost 21 million gallons of water. And this area became very well known for UFO sightings. And in fact, according to the West Yorkshire News, it's also a, quote, UFO spotter's paradise. So back in 2010, a woman by the name of Sue Sell, a contactee, said she filmed a UFO hovering over the town of Scamenden. And another witness says he saw a UFO hovering directly over the dam for 10 minutes before descending d down into it. Lots of witnesses. Another report comes from a couple who saw a triangular-shaped craft submerge into the waters of the dam. They waited to see if it would come out, and it did. Finally, this object comes out. It was a classic flying saucer, and according to the couple, at this point, a strange mist descended over their vehicle, and the next thing they knew, they were driving in the opposite direction. And they later concluded that they had probably had a very close encounter. And I agree, it looks like they had missing time. Uh, one of the witnesses, Mark Gibbons, witnessed this object, and he says, We observed it for 20 minutes, then decided to leave. The craft began to follow us. We speeded up, and it also speeded up. I am sure that there is an underground base at the dam, as it is the only dam in the country with a steel reinforced base under the concrete base. So the sightings continued there for years. Uh, the most recent known sighting that I could find occurred in September 2016, when a mother and daughter observed a spinning disc-shaped object with red, blue, and green lights moving across the sky. And as the witness says, we were in absolute shock. We watched in a blink of an eye as it totally vanished. So I have just two more cases. Here's another one, it occurred in 2010. It comes from a group of witnesses who were driving near the Hunting Run Reservoir. This is outside of Fredericksburg, Virginia. This dam opened in 2007. The dam created a 420-acre lake, which is now a popular fishing and tourist destination. And the witnesses in 2010 were driving by the dam when they spotted a gigantic football-shaped object hovering very low elevation, 100 feet over the dam. They hopped out of the car and stared in awe at this massive UFO. And again, I'll just quote the witness. As he says, I'll do my best to describe this whatever it was. It's a sight I still can't believe I actually saw. I can't really give an accurate, an accurate estimate on its size. But I'll say it seemed to be huge, easily twice the size of the dam wall itself. And I feel I'm being extremely conservative on that estimate. It seemed to be ovoid in shape, something akin to a football with too much air pumped in, bulbous at the top and bottom. The most striking blatant feature, however, was the lights adorning this thing. They were bright, 
neon green. One massive beam or bulb sat at the bottom of this thing, which I imagine seemed even brighter to me as it would have been reflecting off the surface of the re reservoir that it hovered above. I believe it couldn't have been more than 100 feet above the surface of the water, very low. Running up and down the sides of this thing in lines were rivulets of the same green light. We just stood there for a minute, slack-jawed. I remember after the initial shock passed, the first thing I felt was an initial intense wave of dread. The dam probably wasn't even a mile from where we were standing. So they hopped in the car to get a closer look, uh, but when they arrived at the lake, this object was gone. One last case. This one occurred in Sandrio, Italy. This is at the Campo Moro Dam uh, near Valmalenco Mal in Sandrio, Italy. It occurred in August of 2011 and more than 50 witnesses observed a UFO moving over the area, but it was one month later, in September 2011, when a local pastor was hiking near the Campo Moro Dam when he came upon a group of, quote, gray men. So another case involving humanoids, and one year later, September 30th, 2012, a family was camping at the area of the dam the son had gone out hiking and he says came face to face with a short blue-gray skinned humanoid with large black eyes. He attempted to take a photograph but wasn't successful because the figure, the figure quickly darted away. He returned to his family and they went back to the location and actually observed a 30-foot wide metallic disc rise up and fly away. The father really wanted to keep this encounter secret, but the son was so impressed by it that he later contacted a journalist and reported his encounter. Those are all the cases I found of UFOs showing an interest in dams. And as you can see, there are a lot of cases, and I suspect there are quite a few more that we don't know about. It does not appear that UFOs are putting on a display here. I think they've got another agenda. I did cover these cases in my book, Not From Here, Volume 4. So if you'd like to check them out in a little more detail, I'd recommend checking that out. But yeah, there is something important and profound going on here, I think. It's clear, given the huge number of cases that are so widespread and have been occurring for so long, that UFOs do show an interest in dams. I think that's undeniable. The question, of course, is why? We can only speculate, but as I mentioned earlier, I suspect that these UFOs are showing an interest in our use of electricity, how we make it, how we are affecting our environment, our power sources, this sort of thing. Again, there's no clear evidence that this is sort of a display or a showing off type behavior, which does occur often. I don't think that's what's going on here. I think they're just purely interested in our technology and are keeping tabs on it. Uh, one or two contactees did tell me that they're checking out these dams to make sure they're safe. So certainly that's a possibility that we can't discount. But again, we really don't know. All that is really, I think, confirmed here is that they are showing an interest in dams. And that alone, I think, is important and is really why I wanted to present this information to you today. I hope you found it interesting. I truly appreciate you watching. And once again, keep searching for answers. They're out there. Keep looking for the truth. Most important, because that's why we're here, keep having fun.